Well, I can start. Okay. The, the Constitution makes it quite clear that women, people with disability, and a whole range of other vulnerable people are entitled to equality and they're entitled to equal protection and equal benefit of the law. In addition, the Constitution makes it plain that there must be no discrimination against women and there has to be no discrimination against people with disability as well. And this implies, although the Constitution does not specifically say so, reasonable accommodation of people with disability. You can only be equal if you have equal benefit. You can only be equal if you are comfortable where you are and when there is reasonable accommodation. Many people think that the affirmative action provision of the Constitution covers people with disability, uh, but I do not think so because people with disability are not necessarily disadvantaged in the past. Uh, women always will be for a very, very long time, but that doesn't matter. Uh, the Constitution provides that there must be uh, equal facilities for people with disability and people with women, uh, people who are women, particularly in relation to matters which relate to their own sense of dignity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and then just following on that question, how does that, how does the Constitution align with the UN Conventions on the Rights of People with Disabilities, which South Africa has ratified? The, the uh, Constitution aligns perfectly well with them because the... the Can I just stop you there? Can you say the Constitution aligns, aligns with well. the UN Convention? Yeah, yeah. It aligns with the convention. The convention okay, does things in more detail. Sorry, 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 yeah. Let's start again. The con constitution aligns well uh, with, uh, the, with the convention, yeah. uh, though the constitution does it in broad terms, the convention in more specific terms in relation to reason reasonable accommodation and so on. Just for the purposes of people who don't know what convention it is, could you just repeat that sentence say, in mentioning the Truman and the Convention on the Rights of Persons? The, the, it's the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability. Okay, but can you say the whole thing again? Yeah. So it starts with how does it align with the UN Convention? Right. Oh, the, the, the Convention aligns with the Constitution. It provides for reasonable accommodation in more specific terms. Our Constitution speaks about it more broadly and in more general terms but the effect of it is the same. Uh, our constitution and the convention both provide for the right to have everyone's dignity respected and protected. And in my view, it is the respect and protection of dignity which is at issue here when we talk about sanitation. Thank you, and just coming to that question now, um, specifically about what does the constitution say about the rights of persons with disabilities in relation to well, as I said, the Constitution makes it quite plain that every person must be treated with dignity. Uh, and uh, as I see it, that is the essence of it. Uh, every person must be treated with equality, which means that where sanitation is concerned, people with disability ought to be able to have access to sanitation, access to clean facilities, uh, in the same way as people who can see and men do. That means reasonable accommodation, and that means that the facilities for women will be somewhat different to the facilities uh, for men. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be separate, but both have to be catered for appropriately. And the way in which they deal with disability, the best way to deal with that is perhaps to have a separate sanitation facility for people with disability who will then look after it properly, make sure that it remains properly clean, and so on. So for, for depends on the disability, because for women with disability uh, who have a wheelchair, of course, the requirement is accessibility with a wheelchair. For people with disability who, who are uh, blind or partially sighted, the absence of stairs is also a very interesting requirement. So both these coalesce together. But accessibility must be right in the sense that the blind person must be able to find things by feeling around. 
And because of that, the cleanliness of the facility is of absolute importance because blind people have to find their way within the sanitation facility by feeling where the toilet pan is. Blind people have to make sure that the toilet pan is properly clean and they need to clean it themselves if it's not properly clean. So I would suggest that the minimum that is required is a sanitation facility expressly reserved for people with disability, with all people with disability using it, and with all people with disability trained to ensure that the facility is kept clean and reasonably accessible. Thank you, that was amazing. Um, and, and so what the, the next question I'd be interested in is, so are you advocating, you seem to be advocating for specific measures for people with disabilities as opposed to universal access? Yes, I think in this case, specific measures are, are, are the best way to do it because, uh, well, universal access might work as well, depending on design. Um, but if universal access is done, then one has to make sure that the sanitation facility is very regularly cleaned. One will have to make sure that every uh, sanitation facility is accessible. My own view on that is that um, if it is more expensive to have universal accessibility, this is an issue where universal access and separate access doesn't make too much of a difference. And therefore, if it costs too much, separate access is fine. Uh, but if there is universal access, then there must be space all around the place and, and, and uh, they must make sure that every access point, to use a phrase, is kept absolutely clean. So in the case of people, for example, someone who becomes disabled, um, how will they then access this, the specialized um, facility? What do you mean? So for example, if, if we're saying that, we, that specific measures should be put in place for people with disabilities, what if, um, and the, those, uh, s um, those services are allocated to people with disabilities, what if you become disabled through violence or illness? Um, then that person should be able to use it. Okay, so uh, it doesn't yes. matter whether the person is permanent, uh, has a permanent disability or temporary disability, that person should be able to use the disability facility. Mm -hmm. Yes, there must be enough. There must be enough, and you've got to determine uh, how many people with disability there are in a particular area, or how many people you expect to use it, and make provision for those. Uh, my own view is that it will be far too expensive to render every facility accessible. I think that uh, in some cases you've got to make choices, and the choices here are determining uh, what sort of facilities you need. But then there's a problem of disciplining other people so that they don't use the places with disability, uh, poor people with disability, and keep them occupied, which quite often happens. Thank you. Um, and that was just an aside. Um, mm. Okay, um, last question. Of um, course, if you have, if you have uh, disability accessible, sorry, the whole facility... Sorry, let me start again. If you have the whole facility accessible, then it might be better for people with wheelchairs, but then the place becomes larger and therefore becomes a little more complicated for people who can't see. Right, so it's obviously not, as we know, not a one size fits all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then my final question, and then we will my advance this to other questions as well. So we have the Constitution, which is, of course, a very progressive and legal regressive policy framework, um, and we have the conventions, but the reality on the ground is very different from that. So yeah. in your opinion, what are the consequences for people living with disabilities if these rights are not realized? I think that people with disability can get ill, can pick up germs, can fall into facilities if they are not properly demarcated. Children could die in those facilities. 
and and if if for example a person with disability suffers with an epileptic seizure while in the facility all kinds of problems can arise so it's it's not only dignity and convenience and being able to do things properly it's a question of remaining clean remaining healthy not becoming ill and in extreme cases not dying either I think that uh, facilities must be constructed at every informal settlement and at every public area that there is, and that those facilities must be sufficient to accommodate people with disability. Yeah, uh, to okay. Let's, yeah, well, the, obviously there is a there is an intersection, uh, 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 a rich. Uh, I mean, informal sector. We're talking about a particular class, so the intersection doesn't come into it. And quite obviously, um, uh, a blind a blind lawyer will be able to pay for his own assistance and ensure that he gets into a loo or something like that. A blind judge would probably have a personal assistant and so on. So we're talking about a different thing. Here we're talking about poor people, poor people who have nothing, so that they, they, their disability is complicated by their gender, if you're talking about a woman, and that is more complicated by the poverty. And you put all those three things together, it means that the women are more vulnerable, because there isn't enough nutrition, people are more vulnerable to, to illness, and therefore the complications are huge. So if you have, if you are a man with one disability, uh, your problems are fewer. If you are a woman with a disability, the sanitation problem becomes greater. And if you're a woman with two disabilities, then the sanitation problem becomes even greater. So there is a different requirement um, for both women and men, though if every facility caters for women with disability properly, it must be accepted that men with disability would also be catered for properly in the same facility.